Good afternoon. I'm Frank Gilliam, Chancellor of UNC Greensboro, and here on an exciting day on our campus, uh, well, at least at the Coliseum. We're here to welcome our new men's basketball coach, Mike Jones. Mike, uh, who associate as athletic director Kim Record will give you more about his background. But Mike comes to us from Radford University of Virginia, where he spent the last 10 years he and his wife, Dr. Cheryl Jones, um, will be welcome to the UNCG community and to Greensboro. Mike's a proven winner. And as Kim Record knows, I said, we have to do one thing. We have to get a winner. And, and Mike's won. He's a leader of young men, knows how to run a program. And we're just thrilled to have him. The running joke is, uh, it took us 36 hours to hire a basketball coach, and I think I'm in my third month of trying to hire a provost. So we wish that the academic searches were to go so quickly. Uh, but we got a quality person, so let me give you Kim record. Kim? Thank you, Chancellor. It is an exciting day in Spartan basketball history. Uh, for many of us in this uh, room in the Coliseum where he, we have played for the last 10 years, we have grown, we have won, we have cut down nets. Uh, this is our home. Greensboro is home. And we have an elite basketball program. And so when the Chancellor and I found out that we were going to be looking for a new basketball coach. Uh, we talked about what we were looking for, and we talked about what was important. And we have always had a wonderful Spartan family. We've got great history. Uh, Kyle Hines, Courtney Eldridge, Scott Hartzell. Um, I could go on and on, but I would forget someone. Most recently, Francis Alonzo, Marvin Smith, uh, I have to say James Dickey, um, he's having a great career in Europe. And then really, an alum in two weeks, um, Isaiah Miller, who um, one person does not make a team, it's a team, but we have had great success. So the Chancellor and I, we want to win. We like rings, but we're going to do it the right way. We're going to do it with integrity. We're going to have great students that the best semester during COVID that they've had, and I'm excited about that. And we also wanted a person who was going to fit our culture and be a part of our family. Every athletic director has a short list in their pocket. And if you're in a uh, public record state, you don't really keep it in your pocket. You keep it usually in your head. Sorry about that. But uh, Mike Jones has been on uh, my radar for a very long time. We played against Radford. I'm aware of what he has done. I'm aware of the background that he has. He was uh, on Shaka Smart's team um, at, at VCU. Uh, they went to the Final Four. He knows about winning. We played Radford here. I think he won one, we won two. I can't remember. All I know is that we played and, and they're really, really good. He took his, that's not that funny, or maybe Frank was laughing. Um, I also know that the year that uh, Radford went to the NCAA tournament, um, they won a game in the tournament. And that's a big deal. 
That's a big deal. So you really don't want to hear me talk. You want to hear our new head coach talk. But I am very proud um, to introduce you to the next men's basketball coach at UNC Greensboro and our newest Spartan, Mike Jones. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you all for uh, being here. This is uh, a little bit surreal. Um, you know, a week ago, this was not an option. <laughs> uh, I think uh, when Coach Miller got the job at uh, Cincinnati with the things that happened prior to that, um, you know, I did not foresee this, although I've always admired the program from afar. So uh, this is a tremendous day for myself and the family. Uh, my wife is here. Uh, Sharon has been with me now uh, 27 years uh, next month. So, uh, you know, she has been uh, the number one uh, influential person in me being uh, at this podium right now. So uh, thank you to her. Um, I'd like to thank God first and foremost. Uh, he is the <clears throat> center of my life and the first uh, and only uh, thing that I look to uh, and then my family comes next, and an extension of that is, uh, you know, our basketball family. Um, I've been fortunate to be the head coach at Radford for the last 10 years, and I uh, didn't um, have a day that I regretted going to work every day. So um, it, it's been an extension of our own family. My wife loves to cook. We have our players over all the time, and I look forward to her doing that again. I don't know if she's retired from that or not, but I hope, I hope not, and certainly for the players' sake, because she's a terrific cook. Um, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Gilliam uh, and Kim Record for this opportunity, for their belief in me, uh, for their confidence in me to lead this program. Um, you know, I'm just humbled by the opportunity to be standing here before you. I'd like to thank uh, President Kyle. Penny Kyle was the uh, president at Radford uh, who hired me back in 2011. Um, and uh, Robert Lindenberg, who's the AD there now, uh, they were terrific to me, uh, getting, start, getting the opportunity to be a head coach for the first time in my career. And then the support that they gave uh, over those years, uh, those early years when, uh, as you know, those early years can be rough. Uh, but they were very supportive. And then President Hemphill came along uh, halfway through and uh, continued that support uh, of myself and our program. So I'd like to thank them. And I'd like to thank all my former players and coaches, uh, certainly for, uh, you know, without them, I would not be standing here. That's for sure. We, will, we don't win some of those games, and we're not on uh, AD's radars and President's radars without uh, the players and coaches and their families. Uh, for me to be standing here, so I thank them. Um, I'd like to recognize uh, Wes Miller. Um, I've grown to respect him over the years. He and I both got the jobs at the same time uh, 10 years ago. We we're slightly different in age, uh, but uh, we got the job 10 years ago. And, uh, you know, the job that he has done along with his staff over the uh, 10 years that he's been here, and particularly over the last five, has been remarkable. And it's uh, a reason why I'm standing here because he's built something uh, that I admire, uh, that uh, you know is admired around the country, and is respected around the country. Uh, we had the opportunity, as Kim mentioned earlier, to play UNCG, and unfortunately, we did not get a win. Uh, we lost two games, uh, but they were great games. Uh, one was here, and one was at our place. Some of the current players uh, uh, participated in that second game, uh, and I just had a lot of respect for. Uh, the way they competed and the way they carried themselves, uh, the type of young men in the program. Uh, but, you know, when you step out on the floor in, in between those lines, you know, how they compete says a lot about who they are as people. And uh, so there were simil similarities between uh, our programs uh, and, you know, very impressive the way Wes built a winning culture here. Uh, the players uh, adopted that. And you can see it in everything that they do, uh, particularly uh, on the court. So 
you know, that is a reason why I was attracted to this job. This is a, an, an elite program. It's a program that uh, has made a name for itself, particularly in the last five years. The, the, the winning is unprecedented. It really is. And uh, we've had some great years at Radford, uh, certainly as well. But the uh, winning that uh, Wes and his staff did over the last five years is, is uh, unprecedented and, and uh, you know, a great credit to, to him and his leadership. The, um, there are a lot of positives about this job. Um, this facility, the facilities on campus, uh, the people uh, that support the program, Dr. Gilliam and Kim Record, uh, I believe that you know when you have a good relationship and you have the support of the president and the, ad the athletic director and the administration, uh, you can do great things. And that's obviously what's happened here. You know the infrastructure is there to win. Uh, it is in intimidating, certainly, to come into a situation and and try to uh, duplicate and sustain that success. But that is also something that challenges me and that excites me and that motivates me. Uh, to be able to try to, you know, continue the success that uh, this program has had. Um, the, the school itself, the opportunity to get an education from a great university like this, uh, the area, the people that support this program from faculty and staff to uh, the fan base is, uh, has been impressive for me to see from the outside looking in. And now I'm just so privileged to be on the inside looking out. And uh, we want to you know, continue that, that success. We want to make this whole entire uh, Spartan nation proud of what we're doing. Uh, we're going to work extremely hard to do that. Uh, I believe in culture. I believe in a winning culture. And part of our winning culture involves uh, three things. It's brotherhood, uh, which we say is the relationships that we have uh, within our program, uh, particularly with our players. I wouldn't have a job if it wasn't for the players, and so my job is to serve them, and my coaching staff's job is to serve our players. Um, the, the juice, which that's a cool word, right? Juice is a cool word. Everybody gets fired up about juice. Juice for us means uh, enthusiasm, energy, joy, fun. Uh, these guys are 17 to 24 years old. And uh, this is supposed to be the most fun time in their lives, and we want to make sure that they have a great time. Now, there's a lot of work to be done, and we're going to challenge them in every way, never in a disrespectful way, but certainly in a challenging way in every aspect of their life. We want them to come here and be, uh, you know, better when they leave as people, as students, as players, spiritually, anything that we can, we can get our hands on to influence them. And that is the fight for inches part of our culture. And that is a constant uh, thirst and hunger to improve. So um, those are the, the uh, fundamentals of our, of our culture that we would like to you know, add to this uh, beautiful and winning culture here at uh, UNCG. Uh, and we want to compete for championships. You know, there's, there's no reason to play if you're not going to play to win. Uh, I believe that I've always, if, if I play any of you in ping pong, I plan to beat you. And if you beat me, I will never forget it. And I will always uh, try to, you know, get that rematch. So competition is certainly extremely important to everything that we do. And they've done it at a high level here. And we want to continue that and sustain that. So um, with that, I'll open it up for any questions that you might have. But... I will say uh, again and again and again, thank you so much uh, for being here today and for this opportunity to lead this, this great program. All right, before we take questions, uh, we'll turn it back to you. Uh, yeah, if you will, sorry, uh, sorry, Coach. Um, one thing I learned about uh, Mike last night at I think it was about 12, 10 a.m., we work hard, work ethic. I'm a morning person. He's a morning person. So I forgot something that was really important. And I'll tell you, he has already talked to some of our uh, team. He actually Zoomed with our team this morning, the entire team. Um, he has talked to some of our players. Uh, he, he's got some serious, serious work ethic. And uh, I appreciate that. Now, I am going to tell you, Coach, you mentioned ping pong, right? So hopefully Mo, you all know Big Mo, Big Mo is listening because uh, 
Big Mo asked me this week if uh, we'd get a ping pong table for our new space. So I think there might be some ping pong that. games, I think we can make that but you're officially a Spartan. I um, want you to talk to the media. We need to get a good... Oh, thank you so much. And we're going to take a little picture here. What side? Right here. There's Darian. Yeah. Get that. He really did. They wanted a pole table, but I don't think I can make that work. Did you get it, Darian? All right. Thank you. Good. Rob, Rob. All right. Uh, questions, raise your hand. I'll bring the mic to you. Coach Jones, uh, Joe Serrero from the Greensboro News and Record. You talked a little bit about the things that attracted you to UNCG. What makes this a better program than Radford in your eyes and, and made it so attractive to you? Well, I don't want to compare uh, the two, uh, but I will, I will say this. I will speak directly to UNCG. Um, you know, the success that they've had over the last five years in the postseason, particularly going to the NCAA tournament, going to the NIT, uh, winning games in the NIT, uh, the CBI, which, you know, that uh, for a lot of uh, programs is a great way to um, reward the season that they had. Uh, you know, that has been, you know, when you look around the country, you don't see a lot of programs that have had that kind of success in the postseason over the last several years. Um, the type of young men that are in this program, I was very impressed with. We had a couple of them uh, visit us at, uh, at Radford, uh, the twins, uh, terrific family, uh, mom, dad, uh, there's four of the boys and the, the twins visited us. Um, just really impressed uh, with them as young, as young men. Uh, I got a chance to uh, see the program up close and personal. Uh, by playing those games, but I've also always followed them. I go back to, I was an assistant at Furman University uh, when uh, Fran McCaffrey was here. Uh, I know that Robert Lindenberg, our AD at, uh, at Radford, was an assistant coach here uh, under Mike DeMint. Uh, I know that those guys uh, did great jobs here and they went on to have great success elsewhere. So, uh, you know, I've always admired this program. It has tradition. Uh, it has a track record of success. And any, anyone would want to be, you know, attached to, you know, something in an organization that has that kind of success. That means, uh, you know, from one coach to the next, they're still able to, to win and compete at a high level, at a championship level, because the infrastructure of winning is there at the school. Thank you for your question. Hey, Coach, Kevin Conley, Fox 8, WGHP-TV. I'm always curious about the process um, in hiring. Did you reach out first to Kim or did Kim reach out to you and sort of talk us through the process that was, you know, 36 hours and, and getting hired? Yeah, it was just divine intervention, I believe. I think we just, our minds connected somewhere along the way and uh, we were able to, uh, you know, uh, have that conversation. Um, you know, I was approached um, uh, after, so Wes got the job, I believe, Thursday, maybe. And then I got a call uh, Friday. Um, and then, you know, the process started from there. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as, you know, who called who first, I don't think that's important. I think uh, what's really important is that uh, we're standing right here to, to, today uh, together and, uh, you know, looking forward to taking this Spartan program forward. Hey, Coach, uh, Eddie Hughes with Spectrum News. Uh, I was wondering, you said you spoke to the team earlier today. What's your next step, says the head coach? Yeah, I had a, uh, a Zoom meeting, so I, I wanted to uh, meet with uh, our players at Radford uh, uh, in person. Uh, can't be two places at one time, so uh, uh, we uh, agreed to do a Zoom. Uh, Kim was on that uh, call as well. and. Uh, it was great, you know, uh, the guys were all, uh, you know, up and uh, not all of them were bright eyed and bushy tailed, but they were up and uh, had, a, had a really nice conversation. Um, and then I, w 
the next step is for me to get here and to meet with them all individually in person. You know, I'm a, I'm a people person. I like to meet face to face. I like to see reactions. I like to, for them to see my reactions. I like to, you know, uh, feel that relationship. And so uh, that's the plan uh, for me to meet with uh, each and every one of them at some point individually. And, you know, along the way down here, I got a chance to speak to them. Um, I, put my number in there, they, they reached out to me, and uh, so I got a chance to talk to a number of them, as well as uh, uh, call some of their families, you know, some of their parents. So, uh, you know, they, uh, they're a great group of young men, and, uh, you know, I know it's a very difficult time for them, and, you know, this is difficult for, for everyone involved, but particularly for the young people trying to figure this whole thing out. So we'll do everything we can to, uh, you know, make that connection, and you know, uh, you know, start to build a relationship with them. Challenge right now as a head coach, taking over program with the transfer portal. It's it's affecting every college basketball program in the country. Transfer portal was that? <laughs> it's a lot of things, but. <laughs> The challenge of that, three, three Spartans entered the transfer portal last week, and I know guys that left your program at Radford, guys came in. How do you deal with that, and, and what kind of challenge is that for you taking over in this environment? Yeah, it's the new beast. It's the new reality. Um, it's, it's the way it is. Um, you either adapt or die. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, there, there are a lot of opportunities to find uh, prospects, you know, whether it's high school, junior college, transfers, uh, grad transfers. And so, you know, the bottom line is I, the, the type of young men that I want in this program are men of character, young men of character. I want young men that work hard. I want young men that are competitive. Uh, I want young men that want to graduate and get a degree. So uh, wherever we have to go uh, to find uh, those young men, then we're going to go. Um, and, and with the transfer, you know, now that this new um, rule has come into play where there's a one-time transfer. I think a lot of programs around the country are going to have to adjust. You know, they're going to have to deal with it from year to year. Uh, unfortunately, it's a little bit of like, uh, you know, free agency in the NBA or, you know, professional sports. Uh, but it is what it is. And I think, um, you know, you can navigate it if you have a plan and if you are uh, intentional about how you, how you go about that work. But, uh, you know, I'm just looking forward to getting to know the ones that are here, figuring out what, we, uh, what we're going to have going forward. And, uh, you know, we'll make adjustments from there. Hey, uh, Mike, Eddie Wooten from the News and Record and the Winston-Salem Journal. What can you tell us about the style of play that you liked to have at Radford and what we can expect to see uh, here in Greensboro? Yeah, um, so aggression. I would say that that's the first word that comes to mind. Um, again, similar uh, to uh, the way uh, Wes Miller's teams uh, competed. Um, primarily man-to-man -man defense, but, you know, we mix it up. You know, zone is important and it's good, you know. Um, we press a little bit, but, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be aggressive on both sides of the ball. You know, we're going to try to make the other team uncomfortable. The one thing that I really want is I want when a team looks down their schedule and they see UNCG on there, I want them to say, eh, not really excited about playing that game. You know, um, I just want to compete. And, uh, you know, if we can be aggressive on the defensive end, we can also put pressure on the team on the offensive end. Uh, by being uh, attack oriented and you know I, that's the simplest way I can describe our style but uh, you know we've uh, you know we've been able to implement that style over the course of several years at Radford but sometimes the the style has to change depending on your personnel you know um, you know for instance my first year at Radford we uh, we had I had an idea of how I wanted to play offensively but we had a lot of guys that were on the court at the time that couldn't dribble, pass, or shoot. So I had to scale that thing back a little bit and figure out, you know, how to improve their skills. So, you know, that's a big part of our program is skill development. And uh, we want those guys to be better uh, when they leave here than when they come in the door, no matter how good they are. And so we spend a lot of time on, uh, in the weight room. We spend a lot of time on the court developing their skills. So the more skills, the better. 
uh, the more they develop, the better our team is going to be, the better our offense is going to work, the better our defense is going to work. So uh, that's a point of emphasis for us. Thank you. Me again. Um, you had a number of wins against Power 5 programs when you were at Radford, a, a large number for a school in the Big South Conference. How do you, how do, you do that, and how do you duplicate that here? That's a loaded question there. Um, and we, we get lucky. You know, sometimes you get a matchup that, that's favorable. Uh, that's the case in the NCAA tournament. That's the case in postseason. Uh, that, you know, when I was an assistant at VCU, uh, we were coming out of the CAA. Uh, everyone knows that, you know, a lot of people didn't think we belonged in that uh, tournament. But when we got in, we played uh, Southern Cal the first game. And then the next game was Georgetown. And after that was, was uh, you know, Purdue, and it was just a bad matchup for those other teams based on the way we played. And the same thing happened at, at Radford when some of these games, um, you know, I can look back to, you know, a couple of them, Notre Dame in particular, they were really young. Uh, they were talented and they were in a much bigger league, but they were young and we were a veteran team. Um, so, you know, there's an old adage that, you know, if you're if you can get old in college basketball, you can be pretty good. And so if we can keep our guys in their junior and senior years, then I think they can compete against anybody. But that's harder to do nowadays with the one time transfer. So, um, you know, I think you got to get a little bit lucky in scheduling. Uh, you have to have a team that is uh, that has a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, uh, guys that maybe thought they should have got recruited a little bit higher. Um, or they've competed against guys and, you know, they have that mentality that whoever I face on the other uh, side, I'm going to compete against them. And, you know, I love that in our players. I love toughness. I love uh, guys that do have a little bit of a chip because I think I have a little bit of a chip. So, um, you know, just toss the ball up and let's, let's compete and see what happens. Hey, kind of building on one of uh, Joe's questions, uh, kind of the way basketball is now, there's a lot of freedom for players to move about from program to program. What has been, uh, what has worked for you in terms of being a, a leader and a leader of the players in terms of developing relationships with them? How, how have you been so successful at, at that? Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. Um, love, you know, I love our players. Uh, <clears throat> this morning was really tough uh, to say goodbye. Um, so I put a lot of um, love into our program. And um, we have been extremely fortunate. Uh, we have not had a lot of the, the, you know, the transfers over the years. Um, the young man who was with us at, uh, ended up going to Louisville last year, uh, Carly Jones, I mean, still have a great relationship with him. You know, when, when I coach a kid, it's not about those one or two or four years, it's about the rest of their life. You know, I got a call from, uh, uh, I talked to a former player, Kyle Noreen. Uh, he got married uh, last week. And uh, when he got there, I said, I said, Kyle, you know, um, if you had called me and said you were going to get married, I'd say, no way, you got to learn how to talk first. Kyle didn't say five words during his four-year career. Uh, but now to see him grown up and uh, be such a you know, success, he's gone to grad school, he's got a great job, he's married. Uh, you know, that's what it's all about. And so um, I'm going to get uh, judged. I'm going to get analyzed based on wins and losses. But to me, the most important thing is the relationships that you have with those players. We took a hit this past year because of COVID. We couldn't get together as much as we want. Uh, we've played wiffle ball. We played uh, softball. We've gone bowling. We've done all the things. My wife loves to cook and bring the team over. So, uh, you know, we didn't get a chance to do any of that last year. And so, you know, we realize just how important those relationships are and how difficult it is to build them. But I think that's, you know, that's been our uh, formula, you know, a big part of our formula uh, to doing that. And then, and then when they're here, be honest with them, you know, tell them the truth. You know, at the end of the day, they're going to find out the truth. I'd rather them hear it from me than, than from someone else. And so, you know, sometimes the truth up front can be a little more difficult, but then the relationship on the back end can be a little more meaningful. We'll take two more questions, and we'll open it up for some one-on-one -on -one opportunities uh, following everything. Mike, you've worked with some, some great coaches. 
John Beeline, Dennis Felt, and Shaka Smart. What, what have you learned from those guys? I'm sure you've taken a little bit from each of them in the process to getting where you are and building your system and the way you want to play. What have you learned from some of those guys? Well, the, the, the thing that has been consistent uh, across all the programs that I've worked in, the coaches I've had a chance to work for, has been they've, they've, they've wanted to do things the right way, uh, to uh, recruit and coach with integrity. Um, so I built my career off of that. That's who I, I thought I was coming in, and then I was fortunate enough to work with people like that. Um, and then they also have always insisted on recruiting character and work ethic. You know, um, if you if you bring in a team and, and they have good character, they they're trying to do the right thing, man, all the time. You know, and that doesn't mean they're all, they don't make mistakes. You know, I certainly made my share in college, but uh, they have the right intentions. You know, because of their character. And then, if you put work ethic with that, a lot of times you end up overachieving. You know, that's been my experience. That was certainly my experience uh, at VCU. Our goal was to go to the you know, Sweet 16, we end up going to Final Four. You know, um, at, at uh, Richmond with Coach Beeline, you know, we had some unbelievable teams those two years that we were at Richmond and then the first year at West Virginia overachieved. Um, and so I think that that's a, you know, common denominator, you know, is, uh, you know, the character and the work ethic piece. And I've learned that from, from all of them. I was fortunate enough to work with guys who believed in, in, in those things. And, and so I've tried to make that a part of our program as, as well. <clears throat> from a scheduling standpoint uh, the power five schools they love for you guys to come to their place how are you going to get more of the power five to come here and play in the coliseum you and kim must have had a conversation earlier uh because she's really been on that <laughs> um you know, obviously this, this facility makes it a lot easier. A lot of times, uh, you know, teams don't want to come to small gyms, you know, with lo uh, loud crowds um, on the road. Um, and I know that there has been history of, you know, ACC teams in particular that want to play in the ACC tournament and have experience on the court in here. Uh, but, you know, I've, I've been doing this a, a while, so I've got a lot of relationships. Um, I'm going to call on some of those relationships now. <laughs> uh, but, um, you know, obviously there's no guarantee that you can get any of them, especially when, you know, we go out and we have some wins, as he alluded to earlier, you know, it makes it tougher. But, uh, you know, I think there are a lot of teams now that are playing for net rankings and things like that. And uh, so they're more open schedule, schedule scheduling wise. So, you know, we're going to do all we can to uh, bring uh, some quality opponents here um, and hopefully you know we'll be able to you know have some success against them here but uh, we're certainly gonna gonna swing for the fences on some of those okay thank you um, everybody we'll um, we'll set up opportunities for one-on-ones in a little bit um, I'll turn it back over to uh, um, IFL director Kim record you're up Scheduling has been a topic of conversation. Um, but one of the things I will tell you, and I've learned a lot in the last 10 years, um, you want to get good. We got good. Nobody wants to play you. Nobody wants to play you. You, you know that. You can't get them, you couldn't get them to Radford either. Um, but we've got a few ideas up our sleeve and um, we're, gonna, we're gonna work on that. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, we want a balanced schedule. And so we've got, uh, we're opening with, uh, I may be telling you things you don't even know yet. So uh, uh, we'll be opening with uh, North Carolina A&T, which is uh, a game we need to be playing annually. And um, it's a great rivalry in Greensboro. Um, I've had some conversations with some athletic directors, but uh, that's something Coach and I will get into. The most important thing, and he said it, is uh, to have the opportunity to talk to our current team, um, find out who they are, make sure that they understand that we're not going to skip a beat and we are going to keep on winning and that the championship culture is uh, the, the same of what they feel right now. 
um, it's going to get better. So other than that, thank you so much for coming. Um, we appreciate it. And um, make sure that uh, we're going to get those season ticket renewals out here soon. And uh, expect a lot of good uh, pub from uh, you guys uh, out there uh, because uh, UNC Greensboro basketball, um, we are Greensboro's team. And if you look at the teams that participated in the NCAA tournament this past year, I don't think there were a whole lot uh, other than us. So we're competitive. All right, thank you very much. I'm a little, he's, he's on my SHIT list, but I can tell you why. But we should be playing.